You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods. Good morning, good people. It is Saturday and I have been waiting for the damn shoe. Oops. <laughs> I guess I guess I hit everything. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Holy moly. So that'll become a blooper. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop because I'm gonna say Oh, I see it, I see it again. You've, you've been, been had. had. You've been hoodwinked. You've been hoodwinked. Let us straight. No. I, I got that over. Okay, so it was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I threw it down and ended up hitting my damn switchboard. Hope I didn't mess it up. We ended up having, you know, we as Cowboy fans are so mad about what happened that we are sitting here, we are fighting and, 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 and we're like crabs in a barrel. We want some blood. We got people that want to tar and feather everybody, okay? You know, we're walking around with torches and ah, it's, it's Micah Pars, ah, it's Dak Prescott. You know, it, we're, we're going through here and we are sitting here with the guys on the field that have gone to war for our team. Unfortunately, that did not go as far as we wanted to. We are really ready to just tear some shit up. We want to pout pound of flesh we want a pound of flesh and we are so ready to go ahead and throw anybody under the bus except for Stephen jones and jerry jones i don't see these people going after the people who did not put the people in the places to win yesterday we saw shout out to my man law nation who put this out jesse holly saying that micah parsons is selfish and lazy I went through, I put it out there, and, and the thing is, when you hear somebody making comments like this, you start to you start saying, yeah, you know, this this is the mob mentality. This is the mob mentality because we all start going through. And as I'm watching this, I was saying to myself, I, I started trying to think deeper into the situation and think about what was being spoken. And one of the things I had questioned was he said, you know, Micah Parsons never has people over to his house. And I was kind of like, wait a minute. And then immediately I see a picture of, of Micah Parsons with Diggs and D-Law and, and other players. They're eating some pizza at Micah Parsons' house. And I'm remembering one time that I remember wishing that I was there and being invited where Micah Parsons' mom was cooking dinner for everybody. And it looked good. It looked good. And so then I started thinking about Jesse Holly. Jesse Holly who last played for the Cowboys, his seventh game was back in 2011. I don't know if Jesse Holly has the ties in with Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys the way he used to with his 169 yards and receiving in his seven games and no touchdowns. If he is the credible source, not to, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus or anything, but I just kind of listen to this because what he said in this, if you listen, and I said, when I reviewed this, I said, I want you to think about something. I said, he said, in my opinion, that's different than saying it is a fact. This is his perception of what he believes. In the same way I said, Mike Ferrello said there might be a tape of Des Bryant out there that is 10 times worse than Ray Rice. I could say that about anybody. There could be. There could be. Doesn't mean there is. 
And then I started thinking about this where he said, you know, Micah Parsons wants to play defensive end. And I said, well, you know, when I think about Zach Martin, when they wanted to play tackle, he's like, I'm a guard. So do we look and say that Zach Martin is selfish too? And because Micah Parsons is not putting in the work to be a defensive end and a linebacker, and I'm starting thinking to myself, Jesse Holly, did they ask you to play tight end too? That you needed to learn the roots for you to be a wide receiver, which you got seven games and, you know, 169 yards. Did they ask you to play two positions? Or were you having a hard enough time playing one? Because there's not too many players. They're not going to JJ uh, TJ Watt and saying, you know, TJ, you know, you're a defensive end, but we also need you to be a linebacker too. And when you started comparing him to um, the linebacker from San Francisco, I started thinking about them having, you know, Nick, uh, uh, Joey Bosa and, and Chase Young and, and Randy Gregory and Armstead and looking at all of these pieces that were in front of their linebacker and saying, yeah, if we stop taking Micah Parsons, who had 14 sacks and 100 pressures, and we take him off of being a pass rusher, who's rushing the quarterback? Because the next closest guy is seven sacks from uh, with DJ with, uh, Armstrong, seven sacks. D-Law's only got four, or is it three? And Sam Williams has got four. If you don't have Micah Parsons, you ain't got nobody else that's doing anything, making any hay there. And you're saying he should be playing two positions, learning two different positions, and he's being selfish and he's not when nobody else is being asked? So that was my kind of question. I went to bed with that last night thinking about this deeper than the initial thought because a lot of times we hear the headlines and we don't dig in deep and see what is really there. And then I saw this, thanks to... da 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 Damn, Gina. I woke up to this morning. Terrence Parsons Jr. tweeted this out late yesterday. And the headline, his portion of this says, when my mom's got to come and say something, that's how you know you're all dead wrong. Couldn't have said it better myself. Now, we are now in the age of the family, of the families taking up after the kids. This is where football has evolved. And I, I can say from my own personal experience in high school that I wasn't being treated that fairly by the head coach. And my mom said something to the coach. And that was the worst. It was the worst thing in the world was when your family gets involved. It's like, mom, don't mom. I, I Listen, I you, you're right. But you're wrong. You're right about what's going on, but you're wrong about going there and being part of it because that doesn't it doesn't help me any. It doesn't help me any at all. I'm gonna be doing extra push-ups and all kinds of shit. Thanks, mom. Okay, because yeah, I, mom, I love you, but don't I, just stay out of it. But Micah Parsons' mom, ooh, mm, she put this into perspective of what Jesse Holly said. Cherie Parsons, and bear with me while I read this, and you know I'm not a great reader, okay, of the King's English. Law Nation Sports, this take is funny how somebody can assume something about someone they never talked with. Michael wants to play defensive end and linebacker. How often has he said he wanted to be the chess piece? He doesn't know we have the D-line over for dinner, and the chef cooks helps bring camaraderie in the defense. So we got a chef that comes over to cooks. They do D line dinner every Thursday. How many times has they have they shown him on the sidelines assisting other players, or that they went to the boxing gym together? He even recruited other D line players to train with him this off season to help him improve as a unit. He watches films, and he do uh, and do people realize as players, they have to be at practice and meetings for ten plus hour days most days. 
The only day they have off is Tuesday. This doesn't see, <clears throat> he doesn't see the sacrifices, treatments, and therapy he does when he gets off from work to try and keep his body healthy and regroup from getting banged up. Many times he got hurt and went back out to play. Or how many times did he get hurt and go out to play? He could have stayed out. He went back to try and get a win for his team. Micah doesn't like losing. He's angry after a loss. He's angry when he feels he could have played or done better. That's not a selfish player. Yes, he wants to be the best at what he does. Make it to the Hall of Fame or win Defensive Player of the Year award. It is a crime <clears throat> to want... Is it a crime to want to achieve great things in life? You want somebody on your team who wants to go win a Super Bowl. He is manifesting, speaking about all the time he desires as a cowboy. So, Jesse, before you talk badly about someone, sit down with them and ask them questions before you assume. There you go. I have to kind of agree with them. I have to agree with her because, and, and we can listen to it in a second here too again, but I'm sitting here in my mind as the, you, you, some of you guys are constantly like, get rid of Micah, Micah who's had 100 plus pressure, Micah who's had 14 sacks. I believe that's the most amount of sacks by a Cowboy since D-Law had his great season where I think he had 14 and a half. Which the last time anybody else had that many, I believe, was Demarcus Ware. That Micah Parsons has the most sacks to start a career is fifth all time in the Super Bowl era. Yeah, we failed against the Green Bay Packers. We lost. We, everybody lost. But I don't know that anybody else out there was asked to play linebacker besides Micah Parsons and rush the quarterback. I, I don't know that anybody else was asked to do that because I'd be okay with Micah Parsons doing his job at defensive end if everybody else was doing their job as well. Because if everybody else was doing their job or if we had the people to either play defensive line end and linebacker, we wouldn't be asking him to play both. How about that? If we had linebackers, we wouldn't be asking him to have to understand two positions. And that, my friends, goes back to the Joneses. We're sitting here fighting about trading Micah Parsons. Don't, don't pay him. Don't sign him. People that are performing. We turn around and say, don't pay Dak Prescott. Make him pay on the, you know, on the end of his tag and get, I mean, his, his contract and get rid of him. When we're sitting here looking and saying, you don't have a running game. You don't have a running game. He can't elevate the team. No, you can't elevate the team. Nobody can elevate the team like that. There is no team that is garbage that has a great quarterback that's winning Super Bowls. But you've got it trained in your mind that Micah Parsons is the problem. Are you crazy or just plain stupid? Here's a clip from Jesse Holly. I'll play a little bit of it. But I want you to understand, this is his opinion about what's going on. And everybody has an opinion. The biggest gripe at Micah Parsons is Micah Parsons, to me, right. which is just Jesse Holly, is probably the most selfish player on this football team. Mm. One of the reasons why Michael Parsons does not want to play linebacker is too much of a responsibility. Oh, wow. Mm. Definitely more responsibility yeah. for sure. I got to study harder. Mm -hmm. I got to now look at keys and formations and all that. See, when, I, well, see, when Michael get lined up yeah. and just go get the quarterback, mm. and I'm not calling him a dumb player. I'm right, not calling right, him right. dumb at all. True, true. There's no thinking in that. Mm. That's pure natural instincts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You saw in the game when Michael had to drop back in coverage. Yeah. Fish out of water. He didn't know yeah. where to turn. He didn't know where to look. Right? And even when Micah plays off the ball, he ain't reading nothing. He's just going. Yeah. He's just yeah. going. And so linebacker requires you to be able to adjust, be able to have you gotta really hone in and focus. Micah, and maybe it's just the youth in him. Yeah. Micah doesn't want to study. Mm. Micah doesn't want to focus in. And I truly believe Micah wants to be great for Micah. And if the team just so happens to profit from his greatness, then cool. Cool. But I'm not willing to have my greatness sacrificed 
for y'all. Yeah. Do you think he'll be uh, better in that position? Like as, in linebacker and, and, and read? No, I know. Or do you really no, think, like, no, where do you think he'll really be the most effective? Or do you think he can like grow into that and actually become that and, and be more effective? When I watch Fred Warner, right? Uh-oh. Yeah. When I watch Fred Warner. This is a great example. I see a dude who is so locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, I mean, knowledge wise, is so locked in. Yeah. If but, you but, just but did is he asked sheer for like two positions? Athleticism for athleticism. Right. He don't stand close to Micah. Mm-hmm. He ain't strong yeah. as Micah. He ain't fast as Micah. He don't jump higher. He don't lift nothing. Right. But this up here, mm-hmm. he laps Micah. And if Micah ever was to get into the Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu, School of film watching, right. Ray Lewis school of film watching, uh, with Fred Warner school of film yeah, watching. Yeah, right. He could play anywhere. Mm. The problem is he doesn't want to because he said, "Well, I've already had success doing this, and right. I'm about to get the biggest bag in NFL history doing simply this." Yes. One of the reasons why he's always going to finish and doing it rather well. Other guys at defensive player of the year award because he don't want to play in the right game. He don't want to play in the right game. Mm. And the Miles Garretts and the T.J. Watts and the Nick Bosa's and the and the Max Crosby's. They are down in, down out players. They play the run. They play the pass. They understand what they're doing. I think that is, for me, that is the biggest part of Michael Parsons' game. That and, and again, it, it could come to a level of maturity. Yeah. Right. What I was gonna ask you: Did those yeah. other players like grow more into it, or were they off the bat? They no, they, that, that's what they were. Like, like Fred Water. Yeah. That's who he is. Like yeah. those guys. Like, Ed Reed, that's rusher. who he was. Ray Lewis, they, those guys yeah, understood yeah, yeah. that in order for me to be great, I had to have the most information that I possibly could. But Micah is, one, he's the OG. Okay. He don't got no OG. He's the OG. Yeah. He he dictates what happens around him. I've questioned it many a times. Um, when I watch the Niners play defense, I see a defense that Fred Warner is taking these guys and say, yo, yo, I, I know the day's over. We're going to stay 45 minutes longer. Yeah. I don't believe Mike is doing that. I don't believe I don't, he's the OG I don't that believe. Says, yo, come now, yo, yo, uh 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 Clark, yo, uh so and so. So hey, defense, we going in here after practice is over and we're gonna put another hour in. Yo, yeah, as a matter yeah. of fact, yo, y'all go home, take a shower, kiss y'all wives, y'all babies, y'all girls, y'all whatever. Meet me at my crib at eight o'clock. I'm gonna have a chef come by every, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm gonna have a chef come by. Mom's gonna cook up something. We gonna come over there. We gonna break, we gonna bust this film down. Yeah, he ain't doing that. Yeah, it's like so yo, much for that. <laughs> this I'm didn't age well. Now when I do what I'm supposed to do, y'all gonna eat off me because they gonna double triple team me. So y'all gonna eat all, right. all the other so, stuff. W- w- we'll leave it right there. We'll, we'll leave it right there because, like I said, I remember seeing the team over at house with mom cooking and wondering, you know, could, could I get an invite over there? And we've seen pictures online with, with, with him, with the crew. We've seen him working out with Wadsworth and everybody else in the off season. I don't know that you can, you, you might be able to say a lot of things about Micah Parsons, but I don't think lazy is one of those ones that you can, can say about him because to me, he has been a guy who has thirsted for knowledge on the position and being in there. When you say Fred Warner and, you know, Ed Reed and things, you're talking about a guys that, played one position and played it great. But at the moment, you've got him learning that one position and beginning to play it great. Has he learned everything about it? Because I'm sitting here looking at Jesse Holly's career, and Jesse Holly apparently, with his seven games and 169 yards, didn't fully learn everything about that. Did, was he out there saying, "Guy, hey, hey, Des, crew, man, you know, T.O., let's get together after practice so we can work. I'll get moms out here and we'll, you know, so we can, I, I can, uh, uh, did you do that? That's all I'm asking. Did you do that? And understand every time he says, in my opinion, this is an opinion. This ain't necessarily a fact. Now, if you want to go ahead and say, get rid of Micah Parsons, get rid of Dak Prescott, by all means, by all means, if you want to be the worst team in football, as opposed to at least a team that makes the playoffs every year, by all means, the reality is, is those guys are great players, but they are not enough to do it by themselves. He talks about Fred Warner on that defense, but look around at all the people that are there with Fred Warner. 
People talk about how great Brock Purdy is, but look at the people he has there. He's got the best running back in football in Christian McCaffrey. He's got the most physical wide receiver in Debo. And, and by the way, when he doesn't have Debo, he's not the same guy. He's got a complimentary one in Ayuk. He's got one of the best tight ends in Kittle. That's what it takes to win. It's not that Brock Purdy is so special that, you know, that, that he's winning the Super Bowls by himself. In the same way, Troy Aikman had <clears throat> Emmett Smith, the Great Wall of Dallas, Michael Irvin, Jay Novacek. They don't do it by themselves. And this is where you guys have to stop being freaking idiots and thinking that they do. Because it doesn't happen. Until we recognize this and keep the pressure on Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones, we will never win a Super Bowl as long as we're looking and taking the best players that we have, the best things that are going on. And mind you, between Troy Aikman and, and Tony Romo, the next six quarterbacks never had more touchdown passes than interceptions to understand what that purgatory is without having a capable quarterback and keep blaming the people that are actually performing on the field instead of saying we need more players to perform on the field, we are forever going to be stuck in this purgatory. So, for those out here now slandering Micah Parsons and saying he's lazy, that he's selfish, and that he's not doing enough, take a look around the rest of the guys out there. Take a look. Take a look at his production versus everybody else's. And understand what you are asking that guy to do. Now you're saying, I need you to understand your position right here at defensive end and a second position. When it's hard enough to get a guy to understand his role in just one. It's ridiculous. And we need to stop trying to destroy the good